smoking a uh, Dagner Missouri Meerschaum. I like the bit. I like everything about it, really. If it was just like scaled up about a quarter or a third, <laughs> it might be really a perfect pipe. But you know, the cob that kind of defines everything. So, good smoking pipes. I think I got these uh, from the Dagners at the Chicago Land Show a few years ago. No Chicago Land Show this year. Ah, uh, sad. But, say la vie. I'm smoking some McBaron Burley from 2012. Now that's not like me. This is uh, just straight Burley. But this particular Burley is one I can stomach because it's uh, it's kind of nutty, kind of chocolatey. Very well seasoned. And like any Burley, it burns well, you know. It's got it's got advantages. Get my chair set up here. Sinking into the dirt. So I'm in the back garden here. Home for lunch. Gotta go back to work. I was crashing through the woods yesterday, finding property corners. That is a lot of fun, and I just move a little slower now with this hip. Um, but it was good. I was sure worn out last night afterwards. <laughs> but uh, it's what I like to do. Um, so it made me think when I went up there, uh, I had instructions. Uh, would you please find these property corners if they're there? And oh yeah, the neighbor is just like a crazy person. So stay away. Enter the property from way around the backside. Be really quiet, be stealthy. Don't let them know you're there, blah, blah. Well, that's not me. You know, I mean, let's, I, I tend to just kind of confront things head on and be transparent about it. So as it turns out, I have dealt with this neighbor before and she's awesome. I like her a lot. <laughs> and her husband was there, and I could see how he could be kind of contentious, but uh, we had great rapport. Talked for probably 20 or 30 minutes. I did not find that particular property corner. <laughs> I was distracted. But, but that makes me think that, you know, sometimes if you just take one step back, and then you're sort of outside other people's drama. Uh, you know, it can just work really well. And it just gives you that little bit of perspective you need. But we don't remember to do that. We just sort of get swept up in everything that's going on and our dr the drama usually from other people. So. So that one step back, man, how do you do that? I don't know, I, I'll tell you one thing, one tool I use, I smoke a pipe and I love to smoke a pipe when I'm working out in the woods. It's just perfect, it is just perfect. And it, uh, for instance, one of the, the final property corner, so I was out there till like seven, 7.30 last night. Days are long up here in the Pacific Northwest. And it's really warm, we're in the middle of a, heat wave so it was quite pleasant but uh, I taken my accurate my more accurate GPS which is a Trimble Catalyst antenna that plugs into my phone and using the map that I've created on my phone in a Venza map and then plugging the catalyst in gives me meter precision which is pretty good three feet is pretty good and it'll do better, but you got to pay for it more. <laughs> and I, I'm a cheapskate, so I don't do that usually. And honestly, one meter is fine. If the property corner is probably within about a meter, I'll see old flagging or something. So that final corner was down in this hole. I had to hack through some blackberries. Yeah, a few little wounds, nothing much. Uh, to get down there. 
and I'm hacking around, I'm using the metal detector. Not, I'm standing right on top of it. <laughs> it was funny. I just had to laugh. So, so if you can like, and then, you know, I'll, I'll relight my pipe and just kind of hang out there and look around, and evaluate, take a look at the GPS, see where I am. It allows you to slow down. And that is really useful sometimes. So I have to say that uh, smoking a pipe is one of my <laughs> take a step back techniques. <laughs> mm. So one reason I'm smoking this burly, which I don't do very much, is I asked uh, Doug Owen. He had called me yesterday, and I had left my that phone at home, so I did know he called but uh, apparently somebody uh, had contacted him or sent him a note and he was sort of the intermediary for a bit of poetry now I am poetry traumatized I had a girlfriend in high school who was emo you know what that is emotive she was uh, just, you know, uh, moody and melodramatic, and wrote this drippy poetry. Oh my God, it traumatized me. I'm still, I have not recovered from that. And poetry can be a very pure, very powerful, condensed, focused medium of expression, and I appreciate that but I still have my trauma. <laughs> Damn you, Adrian. <laughs> um, so, I'll swing by Doug's and take a look at that poem. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we were going to have a smoke this weekend uh, out near the water in Paulsbo there, but it's going to be 100 degrees at least. And, you know, honestly, smoking is one of those things that when it's really hot, it is not as pleasant. But, so I asked Doug, I said, so, uh, what would you recommend for a hot weather smoke? And he said, uh, a light Virginia, light Capstan, uh, maybe like a Balkan Sassini or something like that, uh, a very light... Uh, English mixture or a burley so that's what I'm trying here and yeah I mean it doesn't have a whole lot of character but it is more pleasant than most burleys if you ask me now an aromatic which would be a burley base almost inevitably I think those tend to get kind of hot. They burn kind of hot and gloppy and kind of wet. And, eh. Everything about them is unpleasant, except the room note. <laughs> Sometimes you want that and you're willing to, to give everything else up for that room note. Hmm. Yeah, this is kind of chocolatey. Even nine years old. I'll bet it was even more so when it was fresh. I'm not sure how burleys really mature in the cellar, you know. <laughs> but yeah, just getting that one step back makes all the difference. Makes all the difference. Huh. Yeah, if you could live your whole life that way, that'd be great. I'm sure some people would feel like, oh, you'll be too detached. You wouldn't have passion about anything. Well, maybe. I still think it would work better. Rather than just getting spun up and staying spun up in the spin of everything.
yeah, not a bad hot weather smoke. I do need to get out on the boat maybe this weekend. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a video out there. Bottom needs to be cleaned. Um, and I'm not sure I'm up yet to climbing in and out of the water. I might give it a try. But, yeah. So I should I should commission some diver to go down there and do that. That would be the ideal solution. Then it'd be done. There's some other postponed work on that boat. <laughs> Boats are like that, you know. But speaking of clean bottoms, I was over uh, on the dry side of the mountains this last weekend. I picked like 30 pounds of cherries, and I gave them all away. I mean, it was it was delightful. I mean, that's a real fruit growing area, so uh, the cherries were wonderful. They were at their peak. So thank you, Roy Ortiz. Ortiz, Ruiz, Ruiz. Yeah, great guy. It's his orchard, he gave permission, so. Yeah, those cherries were awesome. So I had read an article in the Atlantic magazine about uh, bidets. <laughs> I know, and how Americans are not really bidet people, you know. Um, I know my folks had one. They bought a house that was built by uh, an older doctor and his Austrian wife back in Colorado and it had a bidet in the master bedroom bathroom and uh, I remember us as little kids we went what how do you do that what is that for you know and my parents were like rolling their eyes and going well you know um, so so anyway this article in the Atlantic uh, espoused the virtues of a bidet and having traveled in Asia, third world Asia, uh, and carrying a one liter bottle of water with you um, for backside cleanliness, shall we say, uh, has made me a believer and I still will do that. But uh, so these little things are like they attach under the toilet seat kind of and you just plumb them right in, they give you all the pieces, parts. It took 10 minutes at most to install and it's pretty cool <laughs> I think I think they should sell a lot of those uh, there's one called Tushy T-U-S-H-Y uh, in the US at least these are available um, and then the, uh, a very similar product but half the price is something called Clear Rear <laughs> the butler I know so they have a little fun with that but remember that America was settled by Puritans, all right? The white folks who came here were Puritans. It still shows. So, so that was that was great, a great addition to that household. So, so anyway. I'm going to head back to work here. And that's another place where taking a step back, you know, is just really good. Like, I have this list of things i got to do today, and you have to prioritize them. And people are calling me saying, hey, I need this, you know, and I need that. So you just take a step back, and it's like, oh, okay. It becomes clear who's the higher priority, priority and who isn't. So. But I can't smoke at work, you know kitties out here in the shade just kind of hanging out moving slow can you say hello kitty kitty oh. no no you're not gonna talk okay fine so I'm gonna finish this bowl and then head back to work yeah. I love what I do been doing it for about 30 years it's great everybody needs to do well I know, there are other considerations. But if people could find meaningful work, you know, I think that one word kind of encapsulates everything. So it has meaning for you, it has maybe some larger use societally, uh, it 
isn't mass it isn't destructive it doesn't you know I don't know I've never been driven by money and I can always save money and live economically so money has never really been a big issue uh, so so I'm lucky that way for a lot of people you know our mercantile democracy without oh boy there's some big topics huh um, without the social aspects of, say, a religious, finding religious meaning or finding meaning in volunteer work or your family, your children, uh, you're kind of left with making money in a mercantile democracy, you know, it all kind of revolves around that. And that's the way it's set up, and that's how it is. I'm not proposing anything different. But I think you can take a more enlightened, whoa, there goes my chair, uh, a more enlightened view towards money that traps you less, perhaps. I don't know. But if you want a new car and you want that house, especially that house these days, right? Um, yeah, you've got to work, and it's got to be at a certain income level or... Yep. So, anyway, big topic, so I'm not going to broach it now. But, what it all boils down to is leading a satisfying life and a life that has meaning for you. And I think that's our work to do because nobody's going to do it for us. So, you have to figure that out. And honestly, Sometimes we feel like we're out in the wilderness all by ourselves trying to figure that out. <laughs> I always did, anyway. I mean, it was just like, yeah, people, oh, yeah, if you aren't you know, working to make all kinds of money, and it's kind of a game, then, I don't know, meaningful work? Why would you do that if it doesn't make a lot of money? Maybe it was just how I grew up. We'll see what the uh, millennials and Gen Z and X do with all this, you know, because uh, in a way they're kind of in a reboot. Who could afford a house nowadays? And rent also. Um, and, you know, markets are not free. There are not free markets. I'm sorry. You know, there's zoning requirements. There are land use requirements. There are other limitations that prohibit people from just throwing up houses all over the place that would fill a need for lower income housing. So, so, oh yeah, let the market take care of it. Well, the market isn't free. So the market, if it was a truly free market, yeah, that would probably work. I was a libertarian back in high school. I love the purity of that. But it's just it's a dream. It's a, I don't know. It just, I, it's difficult to locate in reality. So, and, and you have to kind of do it wholesale. If you're going to create free markets, you better do the whole place and do it all because otherwise there's constraint and tightness over here. There's looseness over here. There's, That's another big discussion. Lots of big discussions, you know? There always are. And I'm going back to work here, so. I'm enjoying this weather, all the sunny and heat. It feels great to me.